contacted me asking to have a little bit of a closer look at some of this laneway art so I thought I would oblige and show you a little bit of it isn't it cool I love street art this is actually done by legitimate artists it's not actually graffiti it is commissioned work that um, was done for a laneway beautification project which I really appreciate I really like the way it looks this is not far from my home it is a gray day, which is very typical for our December weather here in Toronto. I think people imagine it as like a Christmas wonderland as soon as December hits and it usually isn't. In fact, we actually don't even usually have a white Christmas. I'd say maybe less than 50% of the time we have one. So it's gonna rain. So I thought I would get in my morning constitutional nice and early. Still getting a lot of good use out of this barber jacket. It has lasted me all fall and it is warm enough but we're getting kind of borderline for for winter weather um, I will stick a link to it down in the description box if you're curious it is a fraction of the cost of a Burberry that I had my eye on and I'm glad that I didn't spend the over thousand dollars on the Burberry this one was considerably less it was on sale on Nordstrom as well and I'm really enjoying it so on the theme of Barber versus Burberry this whole sort of vlog or at least this sit down part of it is going to be about dupes and when I say dupes I don't only mean things that are like very much the same but the other one is cheaper or from like a sort of more budget brand it's going to be just things that in my you know 20 plus years of being a lifestyle journalist I have found to be better than the other thing that might be more popular it might be more expensive you get the point prime example of the barber jacket that I was talking to you about and you have seen these if you've watched the crown um, I know the most recent season just was out last month and I binge watched it. So that feels like a while ago now, but <laughs> basically every country scene that you saw them strolling around the grounds of a manor, you saw somebody in a barber coat, possibly without knowing it. Now the most popular type of uh, coat from Barber really is a wax cotton, which is rain and water resistant not exactly waterproof. Less popular is this sort of quilted uh, barn coat kind of look that I have chosen, but I love this coat. I love this silhouette and I love the corduroy collar. So that's why I really wanted it. And I was so happy to find it for, I think I paid under $200 because it was on sale as opposed to, you know, over a thousand, as I told you, which I never would have paid. I would have looked for it, maybe resale, and I still may. Burberry, of course, of course though, is a bit better known for trench coats, uh, but Barber also makes trench coats as well. So. There you go. If you don't know about it, it's lesser known brand here, definitely in North America, more of a niche brand, but in England, it is a very well-known British heritage brand. I think we will start off my dupes list with some beauty picks. And if you're coming here in the future and you're seeing this, these are themes that I return to, so definitely consider subscribing. This is not gonna be the one and done only time I discuss these items. These are very much sort of things that we chat about here on this channel. I wanna talk about Darfin sunscreen, which I, I've talked this one up a lot and so I'm about to mention like some previous vlogs where I have said like this is it goes on so well it makes you look like you're wearing a filter it is now the grayest day ever so you're probably thinking do you need sunscreen and you do when it's sunny if you're going skiing you're gonna need to wear sunscreen that is 50 SPF because you can get a wicked burn on the ski slopes um, if you're going on a sun vacation or if you live in a hot climate of course not everybody lives in a gray December climate like I do all of those reasons you will need a stronger SPF I strongly recommend Darfin. Now, I have to admit, this is the only one I'm going to promote that I haven't tried because it's not available in Canada, but because the price differential is so strong and the ingredients between them, if you look at the great ingredients of this one versus that one are so similar, they're identical. I have no problem in recommending this as a dupe and that is Clinique's, I think it's called Pepstart. I'll put a picture up anyway so that you can have a look. These are dupes, but the Clinique one is much less expensive. Again, not available in Canada, but if you're in the US, you can get to it. I, my mom sent me the ingredient list and we were like chuckling. It's identical. It's, they've got a lot of nerve <laughs> charging different prices for basically what seems to be the same thing in the same bottle. The bottles are not even different. They're the same size and they're pretty much the same size bottle owned by the same parent company. Let's now talk about 
a beauty blender. Beauty blenders, you know what these are, right? Of course you do. They're the sponges. I think the original one is pink. And a lot of people swear by the OG. A lot of people say that the beauty blender itself is the only one to get, it's the best one. I actually have not found this to be the case. I have the one from Real Techniques, and once again, the original one, which I think is I'm gonna call it orange. I'd say it's orange. What I like about this one too is it's got like a sort of wedged side as well that can be handy to use, whereas the Beauty Blender is almost like a perfect teardrop shape. The Real Techniques one is so good. It's just as good. And I find it actually cleans, the makeup cleans out of it a little bit better. Whatever our sort of sponge formula that they've made, uh, the, the foundation comes out of it a little bit more readily. The Beauty Blender really gets stained quite easily. So does the Real Techniques one. I think that when you're using these sort of all day stay foundations. They just don't come out that easily and they have a tendency to stain. I don't think you can really get around to that. Oh, Real Techniques brushes are good as well. I buy them. I don't purchase more expensive ones. I usually purchase Real Techniques brushes or e.l.f. brushes. One thing I found that can really sort of bleach, I don't know if that's the right word, really take the staining out of the Real Techniques lighter and any lighter color brush is I use a mix of Dawn liquid and uh, baking soda. So I kind of put equal parts, let's say a tablespoon of each one and mix them up. Sometimes I add just a few drops of water to sort of emulsify and activate the baking soda, whip those up together, and I use that to rinse out the foundation. It's the only thing I found to take out my color C foundations out of these lighter colored brushes. So give that a try if you have some stains you need to deal with with your brushes. But the baking soda makes it so that you really have to rinse it out well because it will leave a gritty film if you don't spend a lot of time rinsing it. So that's the downside of using it, but it's very effective in being a sort of gentler way of cleaning your brushes. Okay, the third thing I wanna talk about is quick dry nail polish. Quick dry nail polish at the drugstore doesn't, there's not a huge differential. But the reason I'm saying this is because I find the quality of my dupe, which I'm gonna tell you about now, is much better than the OG or sort of the more expensive. What used to be, um, well, no, you can still find. You still find Essie at salons. So you've got Essie quick dry, and I don't find the formulation to be very good. I've tried this plenty of times versus Revlon Quick Dry. I think it's called Snap. Again, I'll put a picture up so you see which one. So instead of getting the Essie, I would say if you like the colors, if you like one of the colors of the Revlon, get this one. It works really well and it's very, very chip resistant. I'm always surprised that it lasts as long as regular polish, but it does dry very, very quickly. And the odor because of that is a little bit lower, which is nice. Let's move on now quickly to coats, jackets, because I already sort of discussed it and I don't want to lose my train of thought. Uh, one thing I've discovered is that Zara this season is making a dupe that's very, very close to Max Mara's teddy bear coat. So if you love the teddy bear coat, you probably don't like the price. Although I will say you're spending thousands of dollars on the Max Mara, uh, teddy bear coat, which has become now, I think, a classic because it's been around, I think, for more than five years now, which is usually when things kind of enter the sort of pantheon of classics when it comes to brands. Because I think people thought the teddy bear coat would be a trend that would come and go, but I think it's here to stay. So we know that the price tag is mega on this particular coat, although it is beautifully luxurious. I did check it out once in Nordstrom. I was blown away because when you look at what it's made out of, it is like just the best of the best materials. It's got silk in there. It's got, I think, either cashmere or alpaca. I can't remember off the top of my head. And wool. These are like the top quality natural fibers. The one from Zara, of course, is like 100% polyester. But Max Mara makes, I think, a weekend diffusion line. And that one is mixed with like not really great fibers either. So if you're really on a budget, and I do not advocate easily for Zara, but I just found this to be quite cute. And I think that if you do have it, it'll be a classic. And if you don't end up liking it, if you sell it on Poshmark, you will get most of your money back. That's why I'm not afraid. And I don't hesitate this time to recommend it. It is the Zara Fleece Ecru Coat and it is a teddy bear kind of soft feeling and it's very, very warm, it's quite cute as well. Um, and it's very oversized, so please bear that in mind. But if you don't have those many, many thousands to spend on the Max Mara coat, and who among us does, that is a great dupe in my opinion. Uh, oh, here's a tip though, on the whole Max Mara of it all. Say you get it in your head, you really do want this coat, and it is like where I live multi-thousands. Someone, I think, I saw this on another YouTube video where you can go to Italy like if you can get a cheap flight to Italy, you can go there and get it because it's under like, it's it's just like half the price basically there if you get it from a store in Italy. So uh, word to the wise, maybe if you're traveling to Europe or maybe if you're not too far and you feel like visiting, I don't know, Milan, <laughs> you could still save a lot of money <laughs> on that coat. Okay, let's move on to another two brands that I find one to be almost a dupe of the other and I'm not, it's not fast fashion really, it's sort of, 
fast fashion adjacent, I would say. But anyhow, you may know that I love the brand Frame. I think they make the nicest blouses, the cutest jeans. Just whenever I see this stuff, and I only really see it in Nordstrom here, which is a department store that I'm loving now that I'm in my 40s, stuff is like so cute. But another brand that I often see that I kind of sometimes when they're close together, I can't tell the difference is Madewell. Madewell is a line from J. Crew, and I don't know what happened to J. Crew since Jenna Lyon, I think is her last name, left. Nothing good. I feel like the whole, maybe it fell out of fashion, the sort of bright preppy look is sort of not, not really that in, but I feel like where it fell out, Madewell kind of went in and got bigger and better. They just do, I'm gonna say, not middle-aged fashion, but that, that sort of, that range from like 30 to like 60, they do that really well. I feel like you can go into Madewell and pretty confidently pick up a nice outfit. The outfit will be reasonably on trend, but not nutty looking. And you might sp spend in Canada, I'd say maybe 200 ish dollars. Of course, you're in the US, it's gonna be a little bit cheaper for you. Well, or you'll get a sale and you'll get an outfit for like under $100, which is awesome as well. So if you're into frame, I would say check out Madewell. This is a great brand for you know anyone who doesn't feel like they're into the whole Zara H&M vibe anymore. Let's talk now some pics about hair and this is what you guys know me the best for. So I'm very confident in what I'm about to tell you about. I stand behind all my picks here. Uh, the first one I want to tell you about is you guys know I have a holy grail, which is Kerastaz Ben Satin, which longtime viewers would be like, oh, please stop talking about that. <laughs> I talk about it all the time because I continue to like it. It's been 10 years. The only thing I found to be kind of a dupe for Ben Satin 1 is Pureology's Purple Formulation and it is called, I think, Hydration. Again, links to everything down below in the description box. It is a hydrating formula and it is quite nice. I've also tried their Strength Care, which is a protein shampoo, and I usually can't use protein shampoos because they don't, they make my hair too stiff, they don't agree with my hair. That's now two shampoos from Pureology that I really like, and I'm almost willing to bet that I would like others. I will keep testing more, but right now I can tell you this stuff in the purple bottle is less money than Kerastase. You can get more Pureology generally. Uh, you can get a larger bottle for, you know, it might not be cheaper, but you'll get more for the same price. Does that make sense? So in effect, it is cheaper. That purple stuff from Pureology, good stuff. If you have dry hair, if you have colored hair, because I think that's Pureology's vibe is like they have no sulfates. So if you don't want that in your life, they're not gonna have any. It is for color treated hair, whereas Bensetin has been fine for my color treated hair, but it is not formulated for that. Okay, L'Oreal Wonder Water, this is, <laughs> this is a big video for me on my channel. You guys know, a while ago, I used to test things very regularly. That was a focus. And those videos continue to do really well. One that did really well is how my hair got fried with Wonder Water. It took me so long to recover from using this stuff. It was an ordeal. It was an ordeal to recover. Some people love it though. I did have someone, I asked people for their dupes and that was not that long ago. So I don't have that many replies yet, but I put that in the community tab. But the one that popped out to me was that L'Oreal Wonder Water, someone wrote, is a similar dupe to Kerastase's K Water. And I think I even talked about this maybe in the Wonder Water video. It's been so long that I don't exactly remember, but yes, of course, because L'Oreal owns Kerastase. That makes perfect sense. What I do also recall is that they also own Redken and Redken also makes a Wonder Water type formulation. So maybe the Kerastase K Water is gentler, I don't know. Redken perhaps is a little bit better. Maybe there's extra ingredients in there that are more, um, that are that are less drying because that was my problem with the Wonder Water. It just frizzed the heck out of my hair. But these of course would all be similar. They're made by the same parent company. So that that totally stands to reason. Now I wanna put you onto something that if you found water, Wonder Water like me to be a killer on your hair, I was just like, I'm never using this again. It's way <laughs> too drying. I did find Amika's Instant Shine Mask which is basically Wonder Water, but with more, I think, I can't remember the ingredients exactly, but I did a little short on this, I think, or maybe it was in, oh no, I know where it was. It was in my Picton vlog. I think I talk about it there where I was in uh, Prince Edward County for a vacation, and I think that that video is called a bummer health uh, update, and I've moved homes or something like that. Well, you'll find it. I'm wearing um, a black, like sleeveless dress, so you'll know from the thumbnail if you see that, and it's got like a floral print on it, so that's how you know that's the video I'm talking about. You'll see me talk about Amika's Instant Shine mask in that one because I wasn't sure, I didn't love it at first, but as I kept using it, because the sample was actually, it will last you. If you buy the whole bottle, you'll have that bottle a long time. It lasts and lasts and lasts, because I had just a small sample and I, used it, I don't know, maybe six or seven times out of that small amount. I used it a lot. 
That one actually was, I think it has glycerin in it. Sorry, that was the point I was trying to make. You know, I go on my tangent sometimes. I think it has glycerin in it or it has some other really nice emulsifying, maybe silicone, I can't remember. Uh, but it has some other sort of softening ingredient that makes it not nearly as harsh as Wonder Water. And I found that if you want that sort of Wonder Water thing, you want that sort of shine, you want that softening effect, but you can't deal with the high alcohol level that is in Wonder Water. It, that stuff is probably massively flammable. Try Amika's Instant Shine. I also saw the uh, influencer Glamzilla used it and she really liked it, but she has a different kind of hair. I think her hair is probably fairly straight. Mine is wavy and so for us wavies, sometimes we find stuff that works on straight hair too drying because our hairs are really a little bit on the drier side. Let's then move on to a dupe for fancy conditioners. Maybe it's a Kerastase conditioner that you've got in mind. Maybe it's an Orbe and I did not like their conditioner at all. But whatever fancy conditioner you have, if you feel like, oh, why did I spend all this? It's not really cutting it. Or if you have thinner hair, I would strongly, strongly suggest my favorite dupe for any conditioner because I don't find conditioners work super well for me. That's just my hair. It doesn't, whatever it is about the porosity of my hair, it doesn't absorb conditioner very well. So I try not to spend too much money. If that's your case as well, and that's your scenario as well, uh, Viviscal's um, Gorgeous Growth Densifying Conditioner. I think that is the full name of it. They only make one conditioner right now, or at least the time of this recording. Check that one out. It is so good, but the best thing about it is it smells amazing. It smells better than any luxury brand conditioner I've ever sniffed. Uh, I love it and I actually have to replenish myself soon. And it is just a drugstore pick. You can get it at Target. Well, I think Ulta maybe carries it as well. Let's talk now about luxury hairspray. High-end hairspray, Sephora level hairspray. You know, your Moroccan oils, whatever hairspray that you're buying that's expensive. I would say, maybe don't. <laughs> a really good dupe uh, instead of buying the sort of luxury branded hairsprays is L'Oreal's Elnet. And I'm a big fan of L'Oreal products in general. They're not paying me to sponsor this or anything like that. I just find that their stuff is like very, very good. They put the research and development into making products that are suitable for you know the majority of the population's hair, basically. And Elnet, the unscented version, is my favorite. It has no scent, which is amazing. I love products that don't that aren't scented for hair. Um, but at the same time, it has really good hold and it's not too sticky and it's not too stiff and it's affordable. What's not to like? So I wasn't even aware that this is available in the US because I was getting mixed uh, answers from people as to whether you can get it there or not, but you can. It's available at Ulta and it's just a really good hairspray. I strongly suggest you picking this one up. A dupe now for expensive hair curlers. I've not tried all of them. I've never tried any of the Dyson, which seems to get very mixed reviews. You know, the Dyson air style or whatever it's called. I'm talking about straight up curling irons. Your Babyless, and I do like Babyless products. I highly recommend getting a Babyless straightener instead of cheaping out. This is not somewhere you wanna get a dupe when it comes to hair straighteners. Spend the money on a good one because it will not snag on your hair, which is, basically the worst feeling ever, especially when you're dealing with any kind of hair loss or hair breakage issues. But instead of the T1 hair curler, uh, I would say, or even a babyless, you know, hair curling iron, get just a Conair. They're really, really good. Sure, maybe they don't heat up in the 15 seconds that the T1 does, but those ones are super expensive. Why spend all that extra money? Conair is a good brand. I'm happy to say that I own maybe three different size curling irons for them for the different stages and lengths my hair has been over the years and they never fail. Like they just, they're great. They work well. They heat up adequately, you know, as long as you have an extra 15 seconds to spare and they just do a nice job. They don't snag, they heat evenly. They've been doing, they've been in the hair uh, curling iron game for a long time. You can trust, you can trust this brand and best of all, you can often get these curling irons for under 20 bucks. So, you know, if you forget it at a, say you travel with it, you're worried it's gonna get confiscated or you'll lose it or somebody will steal it, it's not such a big deal. You're not gonna be fretting like you will with your multi-hundred dollar curling tongs, curling irons. <laughs> All right, so that's it for um, this part of the section, but definitely stay tuned. We're not done with the vlog yet. This was just the sit down part of it where I wanted to talk about stuff. I have a whole bag full of stuff that we're gonna look at a little bit more closely. Let me get the bag. This is chock full of stuff that I have not checked out yet, at least more in depth. And there's like all kinds of cool beauty stuff. We'll have a little bit of a closer look at it. Um, later, up it later on, I'm just gonna go and have some lunch now and uh, I will meet you back here. So I'm about to sit down in a slightly different spot with you guys. If you've seen this chair, you I've made maybe 200 videos sitting in this chair. I'm gonna give you a better look. There we go. Yeah. 
And I've had this chair for a long time now. It actually came from my grandmother's house. It's one of the only heirloom items that had been passed down to me from her home. There was a chair exactly like this in my uncle's room because my uncle had picked them up, as I understand, in a hotel sale. So it came from like one of Toronto's nice hotels and there were two chairs and I actually don't know which of the two that I have, but it's definitely from her home. I remember this in her bedroom. So now I get to sit here and make videos with it. I am chancing my life right now <laughs> by having a sort of later, it's one o'clock coffee and I try and cut this off by around 1.30. I missed my 11 o'clock, which is usually when I have a cappuccino. I missed that zone. I was actually working a bit on an upcoming newsletter. So if you haven't subscribed, make sure that you subscribe to my newsletter, helenavery.substack.com, where I sort of take all the stuff they talk about here I take it further and I write about it. <laughs> so you'll, you'll, we have lots of fun over there. You won't want to miss that. It's completely free to sign up. So what I'm going to unbox and I say unbox because it's actually in a bag <laughs> with you guys is something that I showed you. I didn't fully open these things, but I did show you on the vlog that it's called like, I think it's called my biggest PR vlog ever or something like that. I can't remember the exact name of it, but I'll put a picture up of it. So if you want to go back and watch that, you'll see me actually go to the hotel where they were having these press events, getting ready for Christmas. And I got all this swag after, uh, and I've condensed the stuff that I want to show you guys. Cause there's like Barbie dolls and stuff like that, that you saw. Um, and also my yoga mat down in the corner. So I'm guessing you're not too interested in that, but this is sort of the beauty stuff. And this was from the PR company, one milk, two sugars. So big thanks to them for inviting me. And I have not opened all the things that are inside of here yet, but I'm going to, because I have separated the things I'm going to give away to my cousins. I have a lot of female cousins. So the stuff I know I won't for sure won't use. For instance, I had, um, I have this big set of like lip glosses and lip lacquers, and I'm going to like keep two for myself and the rest I'm just going to give away because I don't need 10 of them. That's for sure. I don't even probably need two. I think this is majority skincare. Let's have a look. This is e.l.f.'s Holy Hydration Mistletoe Moisturizing Kit. So I guess this is like a stocking stuffer thing where you can buy and, you know, enjoy. Probably doesn't cost very much money. I've never tried any of their skincare line. Have you? And if have you liked it, if you have so far? I wanted to actually, and one thing I'm disappointed is not in here, which I would have liked better than what they've got in here, is a mist, like a setting spray mist, because they make those and people do like them. And I'm kind of surprised why they didn't include it in here, but I tell, I'll tell you what is in here. That was incredibly hard to get out of the box. It was really clung in there. So there, here's a primer and it is called hydrating face primer on the go. So I guess this is for travel. Like if you're traveling and you want to use a primer, I'm just going to try a little bit right now and see. Oh, okay. It is kind of, it is one of these sort of gently opaque. It looks like it, it looks like the kind of um, mattifying primers. That's what it looks, yeah, it's mattifying. I don't know. I know that you can't see well, but it definitely took down all the shine off my hands. Not that my hands were that shiny to begin with. So, hmm, that should be interesting to try. It reminds me a little bit of uh, Smashbox's primer. They have one that blurs uh, pores. So yeah, and that's a great size. That will last a year. Booster drops. What's this all about? This is something like, this is sort of a standalone moisturizer or something that you can put in, like you can add it to your foundation. Oh, it's a completely clear formula. Let's see. And the other product was unscented. This one doesn't appear to have too much of a scent either. Yeah, I don't think it's got a scent. Non-sticky formula went into my hand very, very quickly. I put it on this side because the primer's on the other side. That's nice. I would totally use that. Oh, it does have a lot of slip in it though. So I am noticing that. So it will uh, probably a couple drops will do you. You can really uh, spread that out really well. So last but not least in this little kit is Elf's. Oh, oh my gosh. I almost, I have such a habit. I have such butter fingers. I'm dropping things on the floor constantly. You guys, I just cut it out of the, <laughs> I often just cut it out. Okay. I'm not going to open this right now because it's sealed, but I did like the booster drops, but let's see what's in this. Let's see. Okay. Word to the wise. The ingredients are actually on the box, which I destroyed. Look, it was very hard to get this stuff out. So the booster drops, the main ingredient is water, uh, butylene glycol glycerin. So that's what that slip was all about. That makes sense. Okay. So it is a glycerin based formula. The face cream, which I did not, I'm not opening is also a glycerin based formula. So that's probably my face likes glycerin products. So I, it, I will probably really enjoy this. The primer, uh, dimethicone. So the slip is coming from and the primer is coming from a silicone type thing. Okay. Grapeseed oil. So they do have actives in this. The booster drops have hydrogenated castor oil. The face cream has squalene and panthenol. So those are the sort of more active. These are not super high end active ingredients, which it's elf skincare, which is supposed to be affordable, but 
At least in Canada, the prices are not as low as I thought they would be. I mean, they're not as low as e.l.f. makeup was. Then again, even e.l.f. makeup itself seems to have gone up in price. So there we have it, the um, under the mistletoe moisturizing kit from e.l.f. Okay, Millie Bobby Brown's line. Who is Millie Bobby Brown? Millie Bobby Brown is the young lady who's pretty much the breakout star of Stranger Things. I think she plays Eleven. I'm not a Stranger Things fan, I don't watch it, but I do know she is, she's also the star of Enola Holmes, which if you haven't seen it, is on Netflix. There was an Enola Holmes one, uh, and she, Enola Holmes is the sister of Sherlock Holmes, so sort of a period piece, and then a version two, so like a sequel, just came out pretty recently, and that was really lots of fun. It's really good if you've got like young teenagers in the house, it's a great movie for that crowd, or just for yourself. I enjoyed watching it on my own, personally. I, I will never turn my nose up at a period drama without at least giving it a try, and this one did not disappoint. Also had Henry Cavill in it as Sherlock Holmes, you know what I'm saying? This is her face wash. So this was given to me by the team at One Milk Two Sugars who represent Florence by Mills, which is her brand. So I had a great time at this event. Uh, it was just so Christmassy, it got me so much in the whole Christmas spirit of it all. And I got all kinds of cool stuff, including this. I am not gonna use it right now because I'm not gonna wash my face at 1 p.m., but I'm gonna give it a sniff. Let's see the formula. Oh, uh, please don't have a second lid. I hate it when things are in a box and then they've got the second. Yeah, they got this thing. I guess it keeps it fresh, but I sometimes find it a bit frustrating to have so many just different levels of things you've gotta peel through. But I guess the upside is if you didn't wanna use this for a year, it would still be fresh. Oh, okay. It seems to have a trace of a scent. So I'm looking at the actives in this, and let me tell you just on a tangent about uh, face wash, I do not spend a lot of money on face wash because I wash it off in 10 seconds. So therefore I just don't see the point in spending the luck on the luxury stuff unless I like the scent. That is one reason I will often go for luxury products for whatever reason, if the scent profile, for instance, this stuff, it just smells so good. This is Fresh Milk's body lotion. The only reason I buy this ridiculously expensive lotion is because I like the scent of it. Uh, but generally I don't when it comes to face washes because you just cleanse them off you so quickly. It's full of really cool active ingredients. It's full of like salvia, um, sage leaf extract, nasturtium extract, full of natural ingredients. I'm not sure how much of a difference it makes. And interestingly, Clean Magic Face Wash. What it says here is that you don't have to rinse it off with water, you can just use a tissue. So you guys know I put the primer on, I put the moisturizer, so I'm just gonna rub this in and I'm just gonna go get a tissue. Okay, back again, tissue. Personally don't love things where they say, put on this face wash and then remove it with a tissue. That's just not my vibe, I like to use water. I don't prefer <laughs> to use a tissue. Seems nice and gentle, didn't dry out my skin. My guess is that it's not gonna be strong enough to take off makeup, that's just the vibe I got from it. It is slightly creamy and it just seems like a nice gentle face wash. Uh, again, not sure that it could remove my sort of more heavy duty foundation, um, but maybe if I'm wearing like um, a BB cream or something lighter, it probably would work well for that. A finishing oil. So this is the only hair care product because I can see what else is in there. This is the only hair care product. This is from Schwarzkopf Professionals. Session label, the serum, finishing oil. So what's this all about? Oh, okay, it's like a little pump. So I don't know, I guess my hair could use a little bit of finishing oil. Let's try it. Am I not holding it? Yeah, okay, here we go. Lightly scented, I like that. It says to emulsify it or rub it between your palms and then go through your hair. My ends are a bit dry, so I'm just gonna concentrate on those. And I do have um, Brio Geo oil already. I already, I use this a lot and I have a lot left, last and last. So I already have that in my hair, so I'm not really sure that this is gonna do a heck of a lot putting it over what's already in my hair, but hey. Mm, smells quite nice. It's not too strong, which I appreciate. What do you think? I think it added a little bit of shine. I would use this product for sure. Dead Sea Mineral Salt Scrub with Argan Oil. This is from the, I think it's a Korean brand called Laline, and they have some beautiful stores uh, where I live, and they had this beautiful bathtub sort of set up when I went to this event, and that was so, so pretty to see. It almost looks like a candle shape, isn't it? So let's peel this back and see what's what in here. I'm gonna use this tomorrow and I will let you guys know if it's good or not. <laughs> oh, nice, okay. Oh, that smells so good. I don't know what the scent is, but it has the body scrub kind of scent. It says Dead Sea Mineral Salt Scrub with Argan Oil. It kind of smells like any sort of rich Dead Sea Salt kind of scrub if you've ever had these before. They all seem to somehow have the same scent profile. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. I can't wait to use this. And yeah, of course you can feel the salt in there. This is gonna be great because <laughs> 
Tis the time of year for very dry skin, especially on the legs, ladies, am I right? So I will exfoliate my dead skin <laughs> with that tomorrow in the shower. I'm not gonna open these now because I'm getting to the point where I can't, I don't wanna like open these up and then they'll spoil, but I do wanna show them to you. And that is the thing that I was probably the most excited for, which is Alicia Keys um, set. I cannot believe they gifted this to us. This was so exciting when I saw that this is new. It is carried at Sephora. We know and love Alicia Keys, the singer, the person who was on, I think, The Voice or whatever that show was for the longest time. For the longest time, she also was wearing no makeup for years and years to kind of just make a point about it all, which I appreciated. It is nice to see a natural face. What is in here is Skin Transformation Cream, Let Me Glow Illuminating Serum, that'll be good, Golden Cleanser, and look at the sizes of these. These are like full-size products in here. So I believe this is like a Christmas set. I'm not sure this is gonna be full-time available always. Uh, again, I will link it up below. I will use this with you guys in an upcoming vlog. How's that sound? I'm just not ready to open it yet because I wanna get through some of the other stuff that I've just opened. Uh, but when I am ready, I will do a whole thing on this. Okay, we'll have another closer look at a few things that I, again, do not want to open because <laughs> I just don't need them right now. I am working on some other products that I've been enjoying and testing for you guys, so I don't want to spoil these, but this is Nivea's Q10 Power Anti-Wrinkles Night Cream. So everybody loves Nivea. It is just such a cult classic brand. And to go with the Dead Sea Scrub, I have this uh, Laline Botanical Body Lotion, Olive and Babassu, so I bet you that's gonna be really nice. This is great to leave things like this just in the shower with you so that you remember to moisturize your legs because if you're like me, you do your face pretty good. But once you've left that shower, like you're just not gonna completely drop everything and moisturize like crazy. First of all, it's cold, at least where I am. Once you've left the shower, that air hits you. So it's nice to do it after you sort of toweled off while you're in the shower. And now benefits, 24 hour brow setter. I had the good fortune to get a little bit of a benefit eyebrow touch up. Have you guys ever done this? You can get it done at Sephora, at least here in Canada, you can get it done at Sephora. And I think there's a charge for it, but they will do your brows for you. You can get them laminated. You can, I think, get them touched up with makeup. I discovered from one of the makeup artists that my good color is actually 4.5, which is not what I'm wearing now. I'm trying to get through this tart stuff. And when I do, I'll purchase the 4.5 shade, which was such a perfect match for my eyebrows. My eyebrows can be a bit hard to match. I don't know why. They're just nearly black, like my hair, which is a very common hair color. It's not really super well catered to. Probably would have to go Korean, I would think, if I went for Korean products. They probably would do a better match, being that I am half Asian. Okay, so, oh, they changed, they changed the packaging on this. So this is the 24 hour brow setter. This is just clear gel. I will hang on to this for when I do need it. This is to just like set them in place once you've done your thing. It's just clear brow gel and I can vouch for it. It is good stuff. I have used it. I just do not want to open this one right now. So is that it? Let's see. Yes, yes, that was everything I wanted to show you guys. Okay, well hopefully that little unbox moment was fun. Right, there was a dupe that I completely forgot to mention that I will mention now and that is Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation. Apparently this is like the number one selling foundation, I think in North America. I have it and it does, it is a long lasting foundation. That is for sure. If you put it on, it lasts and lasts. It has a tendency to break some people out though, probably because that long lastingness tends to be, I think a bit occlusive for the pores. I'm not an expert, but yeah, I have found actually myself that it can break me out on my forehead a bit. So I just, I don't use it there, which is not, if you're using foundation, I mean, maybe you know this already, but you don't usually need as much on your forehead. It's usually sort of right here and right here that you would need more, but everybody's different. I, I don't know what your skin is like, but a good dupe for Estee Lauder Double Wear is actually Revlon Colorstay. But get this, I'm nearly 100% positive Revlon's Colorstay is getting discontinued. I used to be able to search for it. I used to be able to find it online. And now I'm finding that supply is dwindling. But if this is a foundation that you really like, you can still get it. It still seems to be on shelves, uh, but I don't think it's gonna be like much longer. I bet you they're discontinuing it. My guess is like 2020, basically in the new year. I don't think they're gonna have it anymore. That's just my guess. Based on the fact that Revlon's website does not list it anymore. And based on the fact that I just don't see fresh, like I don't see my supply at my local drugstore getting replenished. It just seems to be like what's there. There's some empty spots as well. And I don't think that it's gonna be refilled. So word to the wise, if you do like Revlon's Color Stay Foundation, which is uh, one of my all time faves, I would say, it's definitely in my foundation wardrobe. Gotta get on getting some now because you will not have a chance pretty soon, it seems like.
my goodness, I am incredibly sluggish today. I sort of dragged myself through the rest of the workday, ended it off with a bit of a session of reading, which is what I tend to do. And if you want to see more about my entire workday, go ahead and watch my last vlog, which was about basically a day in my work life. You can see that I uh, get a book out at around, you know, 4.35 when I'm wrapping up my work. I like to spend the last little chunk reading, which I find just eases me into the rest of the day, which usually means the rest of the day usually means cooking dinner, doing that, that kind of stuff. Ah, uh, but oh my gosh, I'm so tired today. And I do apologize, I know you don't wanna watch this vlog to see me yawning my way through it. But I think I will wrap it up for tonight here.